I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. And we're going to be discussing this afternoon um, the question of touring musicians from the United Kingdom after Brexit. Um, we have a, a very well qualified guest to talk to us, um, Peter Cook, who's a musician, businessman and scientist. And uh, he runs the, the very um, admirable organization Rage Against the Brexit Machine. Peter, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. It's become clear since Brexit took place at the beginning of uh, this year that different sectors are going to be affected very differently by, by the sort of Brexit that Boris Johnson has negotiated. One that we hear a lot about is musicians, British musicians, and particularly British touring musicians. Uh, can you explain to us what the specific problems and difficulties are for British touring musicians under the kind of Brexit that Boris Johnson has negotiated or not negotiated? Well, it becomes clear that the Brexit we have is much harder than we thought it was. It, it was presented as a very soft Brexit, but it, 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 it behaves more like a hard Brexit. So uh, I don't know of any Brexit that's actually good for a musician. But how a good all summed it up, actually, is what the problems are. I mean, it, it's down to this visas, haulage, cabotage, which is a new word musicians have got to learn. How many stops can you make before you, you know, have to stop? your carnage, your VAT, your special certificates, proof of contracts, getting your equipment across, health, repatriation and insurances. I and mean, that's just the, that's the hors d'oeuvre for the musician. Now, I know later on you're going to say, well, wasn't it always that? So we'll come to that. But actually, this for international musicians on reduced margins means that where does their profit go? It goes on those things and not into their pockets. And it's hard enough being a touring musician if you're, you know, already have a brand. But if you're an aspiring musician, an upcoming musician, this is absolutely uh, possibly a killer for you. How many people roughly would be affected by this um, very adversely? Uh, well, um, the Musicians Union report that 42% or they're, they're nearly half of musicians are considering whether they relocate so <laughs> some people will just give up if they don't you know if they're not able to make a living doing it other people will adapt as they say and adaptation means moving to Europe where the market is and other people will perhaps choose a different profession perhaps they'll be driving trucks for example <laughs> oh. uh, they might be they might be um, very patriotic thing to do at the moment <laughs> um, there is a master plan, perhaps. There is a master plan. Um, and, 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 and this is 42% of, of roughly how many um, musicians engaged? Oh, I don't know exactly the numbers, but I mean, there's the creative sector and, and the musical sector makes up for a huge amount of income to the UK. I forget the figure. I think it's about six billion. It's quite a lot. So that's a lot of revenue lost to the tax people. I don't know how many musicians precisely that is right off the top of my head. And these difficulties, of course, don't apply to um, EU musicians, do they? Well, the answer to that is yes and no, because yes, in the sense that if we started to apply our border controls and said that we don't want foreign musicians coming in here, it would be rather like sort of the situation we have with the lorry drivers and everyone else, that they would suffer the VAT and the cabotage and all the other rules that we, ch if we chose to implement them. At the moment, we haven't chosen to do that. So the answer is no, it doesn't affect them at the moment. But it could, of course, if we decide that we don't want European musicians coming over here. Um, so it's yet to be decided is whether it applies on both sides. But at the moment, it exclusively applies to British musicians trying to tour. But for touring within the EU, uh, EU musicians wouldn't have to go through these formalities. Oh, no, no, no. And um, they, they have some choices to make here, as, as all business, with my business head on. Uh, you, uh, an EU travelling musician might kind of say, well, we're denied market access from, from the UK and... People do think the UK is a good place to play and build their brand and what have you. But so frankly, is Paris and Berlin. They have 27 countries they can roam free in. And there's just one that they may not be able to. So as a business decision, it, it affects them disproportionately in their favour. You hinted at the comparison between the 60s and 70s and uh, the regime post-Brexit. Uh, can you tease that out a bit further? There are people who say we can just go back to the way we were in the 1960s and 1970s. 
well, Roger Daltrey is one of those people, so I can't see the problem because, you know, we did it all in the 70s, but he forgot that he was on drugs when he was doing it, and so he probably didn't notice going through customs. But seriously, what he has forgot is that in the 60s and 70s, there, there, there were, apart, apart from a few international musicians that had big music companies backing them, like The Who, um, a lot of it music was played to national markets because we didn't have the internet, we didn't have the global village. It's not much, uh, you can't sort of go back to the future and go back to the way it was. Music is global now. So to say, well, we haven't got a problem, th these musicians, if they're going to travel, are going to have massive problems. And the scale of music uh, has changed. You know, putting on these big concerts is a, an industrial operation. So there are lots of things that have changed. It may be romantic to think that you could get by in the 60s, but you can't recreate the socio-economic structures that were there and you didn't take hordes of lighting around with you what is in fact happening and what will happen because life finds a way is there's a really good example of a company called stage truck that they actually decided that they would move their operations to europe because if it's difficult to take your instruments and your equipment to europe then of course capitalism finds a way so it says don't worry you just get to the border We'll handle all your equipment needs and we'll charge you for that. So, of course, life does find a way, but it obviously impacts upon the, the top and bottom lines of those musicians travelling. And there's one example that in the article that we produced from a band where they told, that they told the tale of how they couldn't take T-shirts and merchandise on which they make some of their income from because of the VAT problem. So that's all gone. And when you rounded it all up, they reckon they'd lost £4,000 on a tour. Now, that's probably a £1,000 each, because uh, where is that coming from? It's probably coming from the artist's pocket, really. Um, so there are real things. You can't just turn the clock back, no. One of the points that's often made is that uh, it's the hardness of this particular form of Brexit that may be impacting adversely on musicians. Um, what could have been done during the negotiations to help the position of touring musicians? Well, there we have it, because... <laughs> It's very hard. It's a hard thing to say, but the EU did offer concessions to artists and musicians, and Boris Johnson's government ignored them uh, because they all because of the fact we're now dining out on sovereignty. You can't live on it, though sovereignty, as far as I know. But we were offered concessions, and the kinds of concessions which would have allowed people some freedom of movement, uh, because in the same way as we are requiring lorry drivers and fruit pickers now, we're making exceptions. The EU probably regards the UK as having a cultural life that's worth importing from time to time. So, of course, we could have eased all of the things about the sort of um, the haulage costs, the visas and other things, all of those things that would have made life a bit easier. And it was on offer and it was rejected by our own government. Obviously, these problems have been created as a result of the negotiations that took place. Is there any way back? Is there any way of improving the situation of touring musicians for the future, do you think, now? Well, uh, in the words of Jurassic Park, life finds a way, and life does find a way, but not for all, only for the most resilient people. So we go back to the point that some musicians will tend to relocate, as indeed industries tend to think, well, OK, if we can't you know, meet our expectations in one environment, we adapt and change. So some musicians are considering moving to Europe. I think what will happen is a lot of musicians will conclude that Europe isn't worth touring in. And like many other things we do, they will turn inwardly on their own market. That will obviously mean they won't be international stars in terms of uh, quite as uh, profitable. Uh, in other cases, there will be facilitation to, uh, to enable people to do their jobs, such as the stage truck example that I'd mentioned. But then it trickles down to quite mundane and little things. And I have an example just come up today of a company that actually, uh, the name is, uh, what is it called? Protection Racket. They, they sell guitar bags and they're based in Cornwall. And you think, well, this is easy. You just send your guitar bag somewhere and you get paid for it. No, 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 because the industry, unlike in the 60s, is, works at scale and through distributors, they are distributed by Yamaha. 
who were in this country in Milton Keynes, but exported themselves to Berlin when Brexit happened. So all of a sudden, they can't actually export their uh, guitar cases, or you can't even get them in this country because they're in Berlin. So do you see this? The, the nuance of this is tremendously difficult to tease out. But there are many, many impacts that people won't have thought of and still which haven't come through yet. So I think we've got a long run. And the simple answer is I don't think there's any easy way back until we decide that citizens' rights are part of uh, a, a renewed approach to uh, a better Britain and a better Europe. And that's a long way off right now because we need to remove the, the culture carriers of Brexit before the EU would even consider uh, some efforts to rejoin. So I think there's a long road. Um, so a hard rain's going to fall, to quote Bob Dylan. And somebody else as well. Um, <laughs> do you think that um, the abandonment, as you've presented it, of um, touring musicians um, in the negotiations um, has any wider um, symbolism for the nature of the negotiations and the government's approach to it. Do you think they, they tell us something about the, the government's view of Brexit and the, the culture of Brexit? It does, actually. I, I think that um, this government, uh, and not just this government, but government and politics are now led by focus groups of what they want to play to the audience. And the audience are misinformed on all sides. So the government has decided that it's it's a, a good thing to promote a sort of nationalistic culture. And therefore, we don't want foreign uh, far farmers coming in here. We don't want foreign lorry drivers. And we want to have our own music industry. Well, that's fine. But we will be returning to an era of folk music played in villages around fires if at, at the extreme. So it, this doesn't this is all fine if you say you want to protect jobs, if you're in the uh, Labour Party saying we want to protect certain sectors, but music transcends sort of those things. And, you know, it's, it's a global business and you know, people want to hear music from different cultures. So the argument doesn't really apply that uh, you should end up having your British folk music back and, you know, that sort of thing. So I think it is a symptom of this government's belief that sovereignty is more important than anything to do with living and having a livelihood and exploring the world. Thank you very much. Um, one of the interesting and depressing aspects of Brexit is the way in which in, in different sectors, uh, the, the, the problems of Brexit uh, have manifested themselves in different and specific ways for that sector. Thank you for informing us about the music sector. And there'll be many other videos that the Federal Trust will be doing, looking in a similar way uh, at other sectors adversely affected or perhaps beneficially affected. Who knows? There may be such sectors, um, but um, we'll be keeping an eye on them for the Federal Trust. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.